So the newly added Weave Walk Strand aspect has caught a good bit of attention early on, largely due to the insane amount of damage reduction that is providing Warlocks in the Crucible. And there's already plenty of videos up on YouTube showing our bathrobe wearing brethren tanking a ton of incoming damage in PvP. But what can this aspect do for us in our PvE activities? And if you're someone who's been around the channel for a while, you probably know that I don't like to overhype things. I do give anything that I'm analyzing the benefit of the doubt and try to find the good in it, but I really like to pull off the cover and see what makes it tick. That's what we're doing here. So we'll check out how this new aspect functions, consider how we could practically put it to use in game, and look for some additional synergy opportunities. Now, the word for word description of Weave Walk does leave out a few details. Dodge while airborne to enter the weave, gain damage reduction from players and combatants. Reactivate your air dodge or cast your rift to exit the weave. Well, in the weave, you'll generate perched threadlings over time, but this aspect's only providing a single fragment slot. Looking at it in action though, first off, weave walk is linked directly to your melee. You must have at least one charge available to activate it. Entering the weave will immediately use about 20% of your melee meter and will expire in roughly 3.5 seconds. But since we are able to stock up three melee charges, and if you do have all three available, you can remain in the weave for approximately 12 and a half seconds. And in my testing, this does appear to be affected by the strength stat, but only slightly. The initial test was done at tier four, I moved up to tier nine and saw about a half second increase in the overall duration. Also, as stated in the description, you will generate threadlings when in the weave. The maximum of five will be perched in 3.3 seconds, so you can achieve this in a single melee charge. While in the weave though, you cannot shoot, you cannot swap weapons, you cannot reload, you cannot use your abilities, nor can you pick anything up off the ground, be it orbs of power or ammunition, until you deactivate it through a second air dodge or casting your rift. All you can do is move and jump, but you will be completely invisible to enemy combatants and you will gain a ton of damage resistance. In low level activities, enemies probably won't even be able to move your health bar. And even in scaled up content, you have to really be getting thumped for it to show any damage but you are technically invisible, so it's not gonna be a major concern for very long. Except for one specific case, Lucent Moths. They don't seem to care about your invisibility and sometimes they'll whack you for full damage. I'm not sure if this is actually intended, but it's definitely something to be mindful of. For points of interest in terms of usage, this is a fantastic get out of jail free card for Warlocks. If you find yourself surrounded by enemies, overextended, or just in a less than desirable spot, Weave Walk can absolutely get you right out of there and back to a better position. On the other side of the coin, it's a great tool for closing the gap on a specific enemy. You can enter the weave and then exit right next to your desired target, getting you in tight for close range damage with say, a sword or a shotgun. Then the Weaver's Call Aspect and the Threat of Evolution Fragment are nice complementary picks within the Strand subclass. If you do have five Threadlings perched through Weave Walk, deactivating it with your Rift will deploy eight Threadlings, all carrying some bonus damage and a longer travel distance. And this can make a really fun gameplay loop. You pop in, get your Threadlings piled up, pop out with your Rift right in the middle of a group of enemies, let that army of Threadlings do their thing, pop back in for a clean getaway, build those Threadlings back up, and then six some more on the baddies when you're ready to re-engage with your weapons. So you wanna make sure that your melee is up and active as often as possible. And we do have some options to help out with that. The Threat of Fury fragment will grant melee energy when damaging a target with a Tangle. And it's a really nice pick, especially if you're pairing it with the Swarmer exotic boots. Another exotic to consider, Claws of Ahamkara. These gloves will give you an additional melee charge for increased access to Weave Walk. And I think the best weapon to pair with this aspect in terms of general use is gonna be Monte Carlo. I haven't seen the Catalyst drop for me as of yet, but just in its base form, dealing damage is gonna reduce your melee cooldown with the chance of a full charge refresh on a kill. I mean, it's always been a great cornerstone exotic for melee centric builds, and it does go a long way in increasing your access to Weave Walk in the moment to moment gameplay. There's also a weapon damage over time glitch that's going on with this aspect right now. Tick damage from a weapon is allowing you to disperse Threadlings while in the weave, but we'll have to wait and see if Bungie's gonna let this feature stick around. And I do have one more interesting exotic armor option for you to consider. When I hear air dodge, my brain goes straight to Reign of Fire. Most commonly paired with Icarus Dash on Dawnblade, but yes, it does work with Weave Walk. Entering the weave will automatically reload all of your equipped weapons, and if you bring along a fusion rifle or linear fusion rifle, kills with that weapon will proc Radiant. Now, in a single target damage scenario, it's not gonna be quite as handy as Icarus Dash, simply because you gotta activate and then deactivate Weave Walk to load and fire your weapon. I was able to get six free reloads on my rocket launcher with a full stack of melee charges, but this one does have field prep and I was able to touch the same seven rockets off a bit quicker without all the bouncing around. Here again though, in the moment to moment gameplay, never having to worry about an empty magazine, is quite nice. 
but there are a couple drawbacks to think about when equipping the weave walk aspect. First, you are losing a fragment slot, which can be a bit disruptive. A lot of the fragments in our strand subclass kit kind of complement and play off of each other. Removing just a single piece definitely has the potential to kind of upend an existing build. So it's not really an aspect that's just going to drop in extremely well with every setup. Then to get the most out of it, you kind of got to be a little more conservative with physically using your melee. Now we can stack up to three charges, so it's not putting you in a position where you can never use arcane needle. But if you really like using necrotic grip with strand, dumping out those ranged melees and spreading poison all over the battlefield, being cautious with your melee charges might not be what you're into. But all in all, I do think Weavewalk is a fantastic addition to the Brood Weaver kit. Are we going to start seeing this in endgame loadouts? I'm not 100% sure. Time will tell. But I mean, at the very least, it's an interesting aspect that can change the way Warlocks approach Strand with some really solid and practical in-game use cases. And just based on that alone, this aspect gets a thumbs up from me. I can dig it. But that's all I got for you today. Hopefully the video got you thinking about some ways that you can incorporate Weave Walk into your loadout. If you do have any additional thoughts or suggestions, feel free to leave them down in the comments so your fellow Guardians can put them to good use. But with that, you guys are awesome, and I will catch you on the next one.